OpenAI dropped Sora 2, and it looks so real it's scary. Discover how Sora 2 could redefine Hollywood, social media, and storytelling itself. NVIDIA and OpenAI are joining forces. NVIDIA just threw $100 billion behind OpenAI to build a new global compute empire. Sam Altman says the next billion-dollar company might have zero employees just AI agents running everything. Meanwhile, AI actors are already taking Hollywood roles, actors that never age or demand a raise, Hollywood is on the edge of a massive shift. Meta's Llama models are now officially approved for US government use, the first time an open-source LLM has been cleared for federal systems. This means agencies can deploy Llama for research, automation, and data analysis without red tape. Let's dive in, because this week in AI might just be the week that future historians mark as the real turning point. We're announcing the Sora app, powered by the all-new Sora 2. So first up, open eyes Sora 2. If you thought the first Sora model was impressive, buckle up. Sora 2 doesn't just create realistic video from text prompts, it's a leap toward what many are calling universal simulation. The model can now handle longer, more coherent video scenes, with multiple camera angles, dynamic lighting, and consistent character motion across time. People who've seen the demo say it feels less like AI-generated clips and more like scenes straight out of a movie set. And unlike earlier text-to-video models that struggled with physics or character continuity, Sora 2 seems to have nailed it. Objects interact believably, people move naturally, and even tiny visual cues like fabric movement or reflections behave correctly. What's even more striking is how OpenAI is framing Sora 2, not just as a creative tool but as the foundation for next-generation AI agents. According to OpenAI, video generation isn't the end goal, it's the training ground for systems that understand and simulate the physical world. Think of it this way, if GPT was about mastering text and reasoning, and DALI was about mastering visuals, Sora is about mastering reality itself. It's a model that learns not just what things look like, but how they behave, and that's a whole different level of intelligence. The implications are huge. You could train robots in virtual environments instead of the real world. You could simulate climate systems, traffic patterns, even biological processes. And in entertainment. You might one day type a movie script and watch a full feature film generate itself in real time, actors, lighting, camera movements, everything. But of course, that kind of power raises ethical questions too. How do we know what's real when AI can simulate it perfectly? How will copyright, truth, and creativity even work in a world where, filming, something no longer requires cameras? And just as people were trying to wrap their heads around Sora 2, OpenAI dropped another bombshell, a new long-term partnership with NVIDIA. The two companies are joining forces to deploy 10 gigawatts of NVIDIA GPU systems. Yes, 10 gigawatts, which is roughly enough to power millions of AI servers. This isn't just about faster models, it's about building the infrastructure for a world where AI becomes as common as electricity. NVIDIA will provide its latest Blackwell and Rubin architectures, systems that optimized for massive, distributed training, and OpenAI will use them to scale future generations of GPT and Sora-like models. To put that in perspective, 10 gigawatts of AI compute is nearly 10 times larger than what most hyperscale data centers operate today. It's like building several entire AI power plants just to fuel one company's models. Jensen Huang from NVIDIA called it the next industrial revolution, and he might not be exaggerating. The deal also ties into Microsoft's Azure cloud ecosystem, meaning these superclusters will likely be integrated directly into OpenAI's existing stack. The idea is to push AI capability to the limits, bigger models, richer simulations, faster iteration, and to do it at a scale no one else has matched yet. Now, speaking of scale, Sam Altman gave a talk recently that's turning heads everywhere. His new vision, zero-person startups. You heard that right, companies with no human employees. But there's a, there's lots of speculation about when it's the first like zero-person company. Months, years. I would expect years. In Altman's words, the future of AGI isn't just about automating tasks, it's about automating entire organizations. He described a world where an AI agent can come up with a business idea, design the product, write the code, launch the website, handle customer service, and even reinvest profits into scaling itself. 
Basically, a company that runs autonomously, with human oversight optional. It sounds wild, but with the kind of infrastructure OpenAI is now building, it's starting to look plausible. Altman argues that these AI systems could drastically reduce the work slop, that's his term for the repetitive, low-value administrative stuff that clogs up most jobs. Imagine a future where anyone can spin up a company in minutes, tell the AI your idea, and it handles everything else. It's both thrilling and terrifying, depending on how you look at it. Because while it could democratize entrepreneurship, it could also displace entire categories of work, from junior developers to marketing teams. But that brings us to the big human question. As BBC recently pointed out, even the experts aren't sure what happens to society when AI becomes not just a tool, but a participant in the economy. If AI models can think, create, and act independently, what happens to human purpose? Do we move into a post-work society focused on creativity, education, and meaning, or do we face massive inequality as a few companies control all the thinking machines? The BBC report explored both sides, the optimism of a future with abundance, and the fear of a future where human contribution feels obsolete. Some analysts warn that even though AI could create new opportunities, the transition period might be messy, millions of jobs could shift or vanish before society adapts. Let's move to Hollywood. Hollywood is changing and not because of the next big director but AI has officially entered the film industry. This time, the disruption has no pulse. Studios are now using generative models to pre-visualize entire scenes, test camera angles, simulate lighting, and even build full performances, all before a single actor steps on set. What used to take a crew of hundreds can now happen in seconds. A filmmaker can type a prompt, and an AI will render a perfectly lit scene with characters who never existed. In post-production, AI cuts footage based on emotional tone. It rewrites lines. It adjusts lighting for continuity. It's not science fiction anymore, it's the new creative workflow. And at the center of the debate stands one name, Tilly Norwood. Tilly isn't an actress, she's an eye-generated persona, built by a British production company earlier this year. She stars in short sketches, gives interviews, posts, behind the scenes, selfies, all of it completely synthetic. Her creators claim Tilly can cut production costs by 90% and make filmmaking accessible to anyone. But Hollywood isn't clapping. SAG-AFTRA, the Actors' Union, condemned her creation as a threat to human creativity. Big-name stars like Emily Blunt called it deeply unsettling, warning it could erase years of artistic labor. Critics say Tilly's face and movements feel just off, stuck in that uncanny valley between real and robotic. But others see something more dangerous, the normalization of synthetic performers trained on real actors' expressions and voices, often without consent. And it's not just film. Newsrooms are using AI to draft scripts, cut video packages, and even narrate voiceovers. In both journalism and cinema, the line between inspiration and replacement is fading fast. The real fear isn't just losing jobs, it's losing authenticity. If you can't tell what's human anymore, does it even matter? Because here's the truth, audiences feel emotion, not code. But if AI can fake that emotion perfectly, what separates art from algorithm? So here's my question to you, if a movie makes you cry, but every actor on screen is AI, does it still count as art? Comment your take below. Next, there's the government side of things. For the first time ever, the US General Services Administration officially approved Meta's Llama model for use in federal agencies. That means US government offices can now deploy Llama-based AI systems for internal projects, data analysis, and even public service tools. It's a massive win for open source AI, and a symbolic moment too. Because up until now, government systems mostly relied on closed, proprietary AI from big tech companies. This approval signals a shift toward transparency and competition in the AI world. According to Reuters, the certification means Llama has passed federal security and compliance checks, which is no small feat. It also suggests that open models might finally be considered safe and reliable enough for government-grade use. Meta has been positioning Llama as a more democratic alternative to closed systems like GPT, arguing that open access encourages innovation, research, and security auditing. 
With this move, Meta gains huge credibility, and it might inspire other governments to follow suit. If the US is ready to trust an open-source AI, the rest of the world might start thinking differently about who controls the technology that shapes our future. Put all of this together, and you start to see the bigger picture forming. OpenAI is building AI that can simulate the real world. NVIDIA is providing the supercharged hardware to make it run at planetary scale. Meta is proving that open-source AI can be trusted by governments. And Sam Altman is hinting that all of this might soon lead to a world where businesses, and maybe even societies, can operate without traditional human structures. It's the dawn of a new kind of economy, one powered by code that learns, creates, and manages itself. But as always, the technology moves faster than our ability to adapt. The challenge now isn't just building better ash, it's making sure the humans using them still have a place in the story. We're standing right at the edge of that transition. Sora 2 is more than a new model, it's a preview of what life in an eye-driven reality might look like. 10 gigawatts of compute, government-approved open models, and the rise of AI-run companies, all happening within months of each other. The future isn't coming slowly anymore. It's here, and it's accelerating faster than anyone predicted. So as we enter this next chapter, one question looms over everything. Are we ready to live in a world built by AI that truly understands ours? Hit follow to stay up to date.